hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review, okay, for part three of the Potomac Housewives Season 7 Reunion. And as y'all see from the title, okay, I just want it to be over. I really just want it to be over. I mean, these shows are supposed to be entertaining, these shows are supposed to take us outside of real life issues that we all can be going through. And we just want an escape. So we try to watch our reality shows to get an escape, okay? But no, 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 not with the housewives of mostly all these cities, okay? Especially these housewives of Potomac. I was like, look. People feel all kind of ways about all kind of people on this show. People like and dislike everybody. There are folks who like uh, who like Giselle. There are folks who can't stand Giselle. And that goes for Giselle, for Robin, for Candace, for Karen, for Ashley, for, for uh, uh, Mia. Not really for Wendy. Not that many people don't like Wendy, okay? I think we did not like Wendy that much her first season because of the four degrees, four degrees. But we've come to like Wendy for the most part, okay? People in the comment section has been a little bit crazy, the right? A little bit of banana, okay? And because it has been a, a busy couple days, I'm like, girl, just do a premiere, don't do no two-hour live for this foolishness, okay? Come on, say your piece, and get off, okay? Come on, say your piece, and then leave. Because anybody who feels some kind of way can put their opinion in where the comment section, okay? It is currently 1 a.m. in the morning on Tuesday morning. Y'all will get this sometime Tuesday afternoon. I'm going to review the Candy Escape uh, FWV show on Tuesday, Okay, I got a little bit behind because Sunday was out of, out of this rest, okay? But nonetheless, I hope y'all watching this and I hope y'all will enjoy my commentary to I just want it to be over, okay? The, the Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion Part 3. Uno, dos, tres. Technically, this did not need to be an hour and a half. This did not really need to be two parts. Some of this stuff, I was like, why? We don't know why. Okay, but y'all know first things first. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to do what? Subscribe to my channel. So we're going to hold Jaybird, Jaybird, dun, 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 and that. Okay, y'all know to also follow me on social media at Jimmy's Corner on IG and Twitter and TikTok. Okay, please like the video. Hit the like button. Okay, comment in the comment section. Hit the share button. Share me with those who was on your social media. Hit share. Boom, Twitter. Hit share. Boom, Facebook. You know, just share me. You love me already. Okay. Now let's get into. I, I, am I gonna be? On, I'm not gonna be on camera much because it's late. I'm tired. But hi, how y'all doing? How your mama's doing? How your daddy's doing? How all y'all doing? I I could stay on camera. I, you know, it's, it's the, I was tired. I remember my little you know said not shy shirt. But we shall see how the system stays afloat. Okay, anyway, let's go off here. The episode picks up right where the last one left off, and that's where Jacqueline and Mia have a bit of face off. Okay, I'm like, it wasn't as electric as we thought it was going to be because both of them pulled out boxes. Okay, they pulled out boxes. Mia had her box, Jacqueline had her box. I'm like, did y'all plan the boxes? What? And Mia's box was bedazzled, and I was like, "What is going on? Why? Are, is it a box fight? Is it? A, is it? Left? I don't know. Anyway, so they back and forth. Look at that. They're back and forth, and whatever. They're saying, "Now look, Jackie. I call her Jackie, not Jacqueline. Jackie to me won this battle of the boxes or whatever because Mia never showed." anything out of her box. I really feel like Mia's box probably had blank paper. Let me shuffle around some blank paper and I can just act like girl about. Okay, anyway, but Jacqueline showed like a little text uh, printout that Mia was not with her mom on 
Mother's Day. Because me and said on the show, I was a, I was with your mama on Mother's Day. And so she showed proof Mia was not there with her mama. Mia then admits, because Mia's a liar. Mia tells, Mia tells fairy tales, okay? I don't know what's wrong with her, okay? But she tells fairy tales and falsehoods for no apparent reason, okay? Mia admits, well, I was on FaceTime with her mama for about an hour. I said, Mia, that is not the same thing as being with someone's mother on Mother's Day. You can't say, I was with your mama. You were not. For you to come and me, no, I was on FaceTime for about an hour. Girl, that's different. Okay, anyway. That again brings up how, you know, she talking about me and how I'm sleeping with married men, but her husband go called me looking for her while she was in Atlanta. Her husband don't even trust her. And Mia then admitted, well, you know, no, Gordon called her because I was in Atlanta. I was meeting with my ex-boyfriend's mother, you know, and Gordon did not like that, okay? He was upset because I was having, you know, dinner with my ex-boyfriend's mom, and I was like, girl, so he don't trust you. And why you haven't, you are a whole, look, this is the weird thing. You are a whole married woman. You've been married for a while. Like, how how old is this? What, is she dying? I mean, if you used to know her and she dying, maybe. You know, her, her last dying wish could be to see her her uh, her son's ex girlfriend who was a stripper because she just wants to reminisce about I don't know what. But why, if your husband was not okay with it, was you sneaking? Anyway, me and then put a box away. Okay, mainly because there was nothing in that box was besides some papers, some empty papers. Okay, now Jackie then because then it was asked the question. I'm, I'm I'm giving the rundown. Okay, Jackie said she never slept with Gordon. Okay, and when they try to say, well, you know, didn't y'all insinuate that? She said, no, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I didn't run with nothing. That was me. I said, we all know. At least I know. I can pay attention. Mia was like Jackie, girlfriend. I need you to just run with stuff I say and make it seem like it's this or that or whatever because it's going to be juicy. So I believe that Mia said, hey, come and just kind of agree with and just say random stuff and we're going to act like it's true, okay? So yeah, let's act like you maybe slept with Gordon and that's why Jacqueline kind of just let it be because Mia was trying to insinuate stuff, okay? And by Jacqueline not, you know, saying no, it was helping do that, okay? Now, the fans question, oh, she also said that she never slept with Mia. She's like, no, me and Mia never had sex at all. We're like sisters. We're just really good friends. That's it. But again, in my opinion, Mia said, hey, let's let these assumptions run its course. Because if you, if you, if you drop some raw meat in front of these lions, these women who we look for something to grab onto, they will grab onto, hmm, they shower together? Are they bumping vaginas? Are they scissoring? What's going on? I don't know. And Mia let Jacqueline just play with it. I was like, girl, anyway. But again, Jacqueline said she did not feel with Mia or with Gordon, okay? Now, when the fans asked Mia, why you call out Jackie for, for, for banging Mary Mia and allegedly, okay? It was a response. It was look, it was our response because she said I needed some dick. She said I needed some more penis, okay? And she know, okay, that was a response because she know my husband is a prostate cancer survivor. Let me get this straight. You had us thinking you had cancer. You had a whole cancer scare. And never did you mention, you know, how close it is to home because your husband is a prostate cancer survivor. Why was that not a part of your storyline, too? You're worried because he went through cancer. Anyway, but she said that Jacqueline was aware that Gordon was a prostate cancer survivor. And Jacqueline knew verbatim that, you know what I'm saying, uh, she said me need some dick with a shot at my husband because he can't perform. I say, wait, Gordon dick don't work? Oh, look, oh, look, y'all be acting like y'all be bang, 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 banging. So does Gordon know that you're telling us his dick don't work? I just want to know, 
God doesn't want to know. Does the Lord know? Does he know what he's saying? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. Okay. And again, I mean, it ain't our business if Gordon can't fully perform like he used to because of the project or whatever. Cool. But she like that. that so that was my response because she's girl, whatever. But I mean, if your husband can't perform properly, you might need some day. You might. It can be the thing to say. Also, it could mean you and Gordon haven't had sex lately, and you uh, it's a stick up your ass, and someone needs to pull it out. But again, I'm gonna leave that be. Okay, me and Ventus, I got some text messages. Okay, saying how you are in love with a married man. Okay, and how you're saying you should stop sleeping with the. Mar- I have a text. I can post it now. After the reunion. Allegedly, apparently, allegedly, Mia posted the text, supposedly, allegedly, from Jacqueline, showing a conversation of her talking about Mary Mia. Well, Jacqueline then made a post, let me read it, I got it in my phone. Now, Mia deleted her text. Text. She deleted her post because, you know, she was like, I can't believe it. Um... Mia first deleted the text that she put on Twitter that was allegedly from Jacqueline saying how she was messing with married men, was in love with a married man, and she needed to stop doing it. And I did not see those texts, but I heard everybody talk about the text after Mia had already, had already deleted the, the post. Now, I don't know when the text was, I don't know the post, the text was from this year last year, 10 years ago, whatever, I don't know. Because if she was banging a married man eight years ago, that ain't recent. I mean, you should fuck married men, but if, if she's not currently doing that, why make it seem as if she currently, I mean, that be. So, Jacqueline made a post, and the only reason I'm not putting it up is because uh, Schoolboy, y'all remember Schoolboy, who used to be on the panel with um uh, Avatar or whatever, and then all this stuff happened. But anyway, Schoolboy um post reposted Jacqueline's Twitter to her, her tweet of her saying, "Since you want to play low, I will return the favor. One thing you can't ever say about me is that I am a criminal." What you need to focus on is that audit and how you and your husband have 750 transactions unaccounted for for close for close to one million dollars. Okay, unaccounted for. So when Schoolboy posted that, and again, Schoolboy posted Jacqueline's tweet. Jacqueline had then deleted the tweet. Okay, and after. She deleted it, but people still posted it. Jack, not Jack, Mia DM'd Schoolboy and said, "Hey, you need to take this down. You know anything about me or my business? You know it's not true. Blah 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 blah. Okay, this is a warning. Take it down. I was like, bitch, that is a warning. Not take it. Down. I was like, first of all, sh- Mia, Mia, Mia." Mia has, I'm trying to go to school with page. Mia has this selective memory as if, oh, don't post this. Oh, don't post that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Okay. Um, let me share my screen. But again, school boy post. And I saw that, you know, she posted earlier. So, Oh, okay, so Schoolboy again had posted the thing. Now she Schoolboy has taken it down since then. But again, uh, you know, I got one of these after my IG posts or what Jacqueline put on or or what Jacqueline posted on her IG last. Allowed my my made it okay. And then the thing said allegations against myself, Mia Thornton, concerning my financial dealings and business affairs are false. We are requesting for the alleged post to be removed. Accept this as a final warning. And I was like, girl, what? And Mia even commented on Schoolboy's post saying, thanks for your support. First of all, I feel like if y'all not on, you go ahead and follow Schoolboy. Because Schoolboy is still on IG and does TikToks. 
So go ahead and follow us, boy. Um, but again, okay, people, because again, took down a post of what it was. I just have a screenshot of what it said. I'm not, I'm not gonna post it. I'm not gonna post it. Oh, school went live. Okay, I'm watching watch later. Anyway, but again, you know, Mia around here on BS was so when she said on the show, on the show, on the show. Okay, I got text about you and you, Maria. She posted the text after the reunion went off. And that post and delete shit, I don't like that. Post is stand 10 toes down. Bishop Rob Marie, stand 10 toes down on what you posted. Okay, I hate when folks post and I, I look, I rarely ever post and delete. I only delete some if I have like a, a typo or whatever, I'll delete. But if I post, I, I said what I said. I said, I said what I said, okay? But whatever. Anyway, so again, but that also shows me Jacqueline and Mia are messy because Mia did a post in the leak. Jacqueline did a post in the leak. For what? For what? Now, Jacqueline said on the show, your business is in shambles. She said, she said that on the show. So to me, Bravo probably cut out what Jacqueline said for that not to air on TV. So she didn't post it on Twitter. Jacqueline did not meet Jacqueline. Okay. Anyway, so Andy then asked me, well, how can you tell Jacqueline to stop, you know, being with Mary Mia? But you was with Gordon when he was married. You, you slept with all Mary Mia. Well, you know, I, I should close my I should. I should do I also should close my legs to Mary men. Okay. But I admit it. I don't deny it like her. Maybe she don't want folk to know that in her past or her current that she at one time in life slept with someone married. You wanting to admit that, that's on you, Mia. That's on, you can't want her to be you. Okay, you can't do that. Me and I'm on earth. Need some water. Mia's a hypocrite. Mia wants people to be like her even though she don't like being like her. Okay, anyway. Uh, Jackie also brings up, brings up how Mia never called her or contacted her, okay, to even try to have a conversation about what happened. Meaning since the show stopped, well, since they stopped filming, Mia has not reached out to discuss their friendship for how They were friends for 20, 30 years. And so for this show to cause us to fall out and you don't even want to talk about it, was I ever really your friend? Okay, she didn't call me to talk about her being a shitty friend, posting a video about me. You know, Mia, before the show aired, Mia posted a video showing Jacqueline, like, fussing and arguing with her ex, accusing Jacqueline of being abusive. That came out before the show. And that's how we knew they fell out, because before the show aired, uh, uh, Mia was on social media posting all kinds of about, I was like, girl, you messy, okay? And... It's kind of crazy. And when me, when when Jack was there, and you also, you know, that text sent out my house again for a clothes one. I'm she said, I still have my home. You don't. I was like, oh, Mia don't have her home. Oh, look, foreclosure ain't funny. But again, for me to post or send a text to the group saying that Jacqueline's house was in foreclosure and she was losing her house, but Mia was renting. All her house. Look, my response would have been first, first of all, I have a mortgage. <laughs> you rent, okay? Leave me be, bitch. Now, because me replied saying, You asked us to borrow money to pay your mortgage. And she said, Girl, whatever. I, I've never, you, you've never given me money. I still said, You are renting homes. Each home you rented, you had to move out of. Okay, I am in my same house. I didn't have a foreclosure. I did not move out. I also did not think of the one of the house I was renting. Mia is a fraud. A whole fraud. Okay, but I mean that be now on Jackie Jackie brings up how she's Mia has never even money. Mia then said, but Gordon has. But Gordon has. Now they get on that whole poor situation. Jacqueline says Gordon never gave her money, and she lied about saying that he gave her money. To get her poor, she said, because Jacqueline says because Mia needed a storyline. Now, while Mia tried to accuse that of Jackie, I said, "You lying? Why you you brought her on the show, and everything that we found out about her came out of your mouth? 
it was always her having to respond to explain whatever you already said about her. So when Jacqueline said how he never got me the car, you, this, is the, this is the title. It said by name, I got the car. And then when Mia said, well, you was when you, you, you needed a story like, no, you did. You told me to come around here and you wanted me to be the friend you had to help this season. And I had this say stuff and let it play out. I was like, we all knew Mia was trying to create a narrative that she was a friend who's always helping Jacqueline. She she needs a toothbrush. Really? And it was stuff that she was saying in the confessional, not really on the show. So I feel like Mia tried to play the game and lost because we the fans saw it through her bullshit. Now, me and Jacqueline on the show is like, we can't fix this. We're not talking right now. It's done. Now, on social media, we know that Mia recently, you know, apologized and said she wants to fix things with Jacqueline. I would never. Any friend who tries to embarrass me on national television and tell, because this is my thing. I don't know if Jacqueline ever banged married men. What I do know is Mia said she did. So you try to shame your best friend on national television. I would never be back cool with Mia. Okay, let's move on to Jack, not Jacqueline, to Karen and Cherise. Honey, Cherise in this ponytail, I was like, girl, why is you a genie in the bottle? You want to rub your right way? What is this Christina Aguilera ass girl? I was like, what? Why is it, but the girl? <sighs> Sharice just irks my nerves sometimes or whatever. But at least the lace front looks much better. This wig, this wig could have been better if it wasn't this Scotia ass ponytail with a whole bunch of big ass curls, okay? Because the lace up front is laid perfectly. Why not have it be, girl, I don't know. This not this. This not this, okay? Now, Andy made a point in saying, Sharice did not contact the show to come back around here to take you down here. I wanted to be clear, okay, that it wasn't Sharice who contacted the show. We called her to bring her back on the show. I said, oh, you don't say. This is my thing. I feel like the fact that the show called Sharice, the producers, in my opinion, knew Karen and Sharice had issues because I'm sure the other ladies said, hey, Sharice and Karen ain't along too much. We like Sharice. But Karen and her don't really get along with her. To me, no one out the blue calls Sharice to come back to the show. She don't do she don't do nothing. I had to get back on screen. She don't do nothing. And she look, she can be a, a, a great friend. She could be, and I mean in life, not on the show. She could be a great person in general in, in life. On this show, on this show, for the housewives, she's boring. Bad wigs, bad fashion. She just doesn't work. Even and this is the great part. Karen ignored her all season. I think production thought we can bring Sharice back around. Her and Karen can either fix whatever's the issue between them, or the fussing will be great TV. That was their thought. I'm sure once they talked to Sharice, she said, Well, me and Karen ain't that well. They all felt like this would be great, not for her to take Karen down, but just the interaction with Karen would have been, would have been great TV. No one thought Karen would spend the whole season avoiding that lady. No one thought that. No one thought, ah, ah, Karen was smarter than the average bear. Bring this bitch back. Bring her back. Who? I won't talk to her. Every time y'all try to put me around, I'm going to leave. I'm sick. <laughs> I got to go. It's late. I have to leave. Okay? So that's on them. But to get cool to the, to Andy saying Sharice did not ask to come back, they contacted her. No one can tell me they said if they said, you know what? We need to spice the season up. You know what? Let's bring back Sharice because she's always been great TV. Ma'am, no. No. They said if Sharice and Karen get the fussing or fix it, 
fussing and fixing, fixing, fixing and fussing, it'll still be a great season. And it was an epic fail. Because everyone said, why is Sharice here? You don't even go here. Even though Sharice was on season one, even though they want to say that Sharice was the one who connected everyone in season one, she's not entertaining. You can know all the people in the world if you are not entertaining and other people are, you will be the one who we says, bye-bye. Bye-bye, Sharice. She's just, that's not a knock to her as a person. She's not entertaining. She barely talk. And when she did talk, it was about Karen. So, girl, kiss me. The bullshit. Anyway. They try to touch on Karen, um, Sharice attending Karen's mom's funeral. I don't know. Look, as a person who parent passed away. First of all, I don't remember <laughs> who came to my daddy's funeral. Look, my father's funeral, which happened in 2014, is such a blur. I was in such a haze of just grief. I don't recall who was there. I don't recall seeing anyone. I recall me sitting on the front, fr- on the front pew crying and I couldn't hear nothing else beside me crying. I don't recall seeing I don't recall seeing my mama. I don't know how anybody else was at my dad. Not until we were at the repass and then I could I saw like faces or whatever. I would not want to be sitting up here fussing about someone who came to my father's family. I would not want to because that day is already painful enough. I don't want to rehash you, bitch. If I say you came, cool, but I felt like you came to, 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 to be around for the wrong reason, that's my feeling. What I'm not going to do is keep fussing with you about it because accept how I felt and let it be. I don't like you. <laughs> you come in, don't mean nothing to me. I don't like you. And the bottom line is for whatever the reason may be, Karen don't rock with Sharice anymore. Even if she did fight, even if she did whatever, whatever, she don't know more. Okay, and trying to hash out this, but she came to your mama. So, so what? That don't matter. She came, cool. That was nice. I still felt like she came for the wrong damn reason, okay? I don't see the reason for trying to rehash Karen Mama funeral. And Karen says, look, I'm not discussing my mom funeral because it takes me back to that day. I ain't doing that. I'm not, and I respect her for saying, respect my wish for me to not have to discuss my mother's funeral because this bitch went is what I would have said. Karen can sometimes finagle her, finagle her way out of stuff. I feel like this thing right here, let it be. Let it be, okay? And when Karen said, I won't discuss it, you know, Andy. So, Sharice, I was like, Andy, you messy bitch. <laughs> so, Sharice, how did you, it doesn't matter how she felt. Because when Andy then said, if I had someone came to my loved ones, I would be, Andy and Karen said, that's you. You, that you, I'm not you. We two different people. Andy, shut up. Now, Cherie said, me and Karen were friends, you know, when that happened. He says, I don't get why I'm upset. You know, she invited me to, her, to an event um, in 2019. And he said, now the text they showed, this is the text they showed. Now, we see mate. What? We see. Oh, um, we see May tenth, twenty. Because it gets one thirty four in the morning. In, in one. Stop texting me. Um, uh, it's May tenth, twenty nineteen. You know where we see Karen allegedly text Sharice. Hey, Sharice, hope all is well. Going over my VIP list. Are you coming? Yes, sorry. Thought I was responded. And then we see Karen said, no worries. And then she said, and then Sharice said, looking forward to it. That was in 2019. What I noticed was their next text wasn't until September of 2021. So two years later. So to me, what that means is Karen and Sharice 
don't talk like that. They didn't talk for two more years. And to me, Karen inviting her to a, a public event means, bitch, I need people in the seats. I don't really rock with you. You there? Cool. Hey. And that's it. Okay? Some social stuff. That's it. That's it. Okay? Now, my point is, that means Sharice and Karen are not friends. 2019 was still, what, three years ago? No, wait, four years ago. Okay? If this is from May of 2019, 20, 21, 22, that's almost four years ago. Okay? So, what's the point? They don't, and they did not, the next text, you see text was September 27th, 2021. They don't talk. Leave me, Okay? Hello, Robin. Well, Karen also invited her to her 55th birthday party. That was in 2018. Five years ago. Why are y'all bringing up Karen invited her places four and five years ago? When Karen has also said about five years, I have not really dealt with you in like five years. It had, that's that's exactly true. This is from 2019. Karen's 55th birthday was in 2018. Karen don't like her. Or Karen can be around her when she wants to. But we not really rocking. I don't, why are y'all beating the damn dead horse? Now, Karen even brought up how she did not invite Sharice that Matt, her assistant, mm -hmm, that little white man, was planning the party. And he asked her, hey, can Sharice come? She said, sure. But again, that was in 2018. Look, I've always said, if you have not talked to me within two years, and I mean, we have not talked like, we can talk like via text. It can be an, I, an IG. If we don't talk, we don't talk. You can't tell me in 2023, if I ain't talked to you since 2019 or 2021, bitch, I don't, we don't, I don't really, we don't hang out. I know you, yes. But we're not friends, and, and no one can force me to be around you. So leave me be, okay? So I don't get why they're trying to force this shit. I don't, okay? Now, you don't care, and I care. Uh, Sharice and these alleged rumors about Karen, that Karen was out here banging some man in the bathroom stall who was a worker. And Karen said, look, I would never say, you know, no, she said, I said that about Karen because Karen, um, I heard, was talking about me, and I was hurt. I was upset. So I was like, but, but was it true? Was it true? Or was it stuff you heard from whoever, and you, you're, look, I can say right now, I heard Karen Wiggs is, uh, is, is, is goat hair, okay? And that Giselle, uh, fashions are from, you know, Indonesia, and she paid. Two. You can say anything to someone that can be a rumor. To repeat stuff as if it was was someone. To, so what? People make up stuff all the time. And when someone said, "I heard, I heard, I heard," and they tell you what they heard, that don't make it fact. And that goes for, for anyone. That goes for anyone. They go for everybody on this show. They go for Karen. They go for Wendy, Mia, Giselle, Rock, all these hoes. Okay? So, whatever. Now, Karen, again, brought up how I would never, you know, say anything about you like that. I would never, you know, t repeat an inappropriate sexual whatever. With some, I, would, I would not do that because you have children. You repeating a rumor about me that my kids have, and I, again, you have, you have petty rumors. Girl, you know, Karen, you know, uh, car at uh, at Saks got declined. Okay, Karen broke. Mm, girl, yes. Is that kind of petty rumor? Or, girl, Karen, she know right, girl. Is, is she? Yeah, girl, she was. That's different. Karen was out here in the bar. We fucking, that's, that's a different kind. That kind of rumor can ruin a marriage. So, my thing be, y'all don't have these, y'all have petty rumors? Karen House got roaches? <laughs> it's not bad, it's not nice. I'm just saying, a rumor that does not ruin someone's 
relationship with a people where someone kid like mom, you was fucking in the bathroom. Mama, not in the ba- mama, really? You know what I'm saying? So I get Karen's point and say I would not say something that would like warn yourself. Now Karen was saying you ruin families. You ruin. I'm not Karen. Who full family did she ruin? What happened? Okay, what did she do? Again, I need them to start getting some petty, not salaciously, um, horrible rumors about each other. Okay, I'm gonna leave that be. Now, Andy asked Mia about her saying what well, I heard. You know. I think the restaurant owner told me what. So the fact that me, oh, we, 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 we oh, excuse me, we, we there now? Really, we're, do, we're doing this? Yes, bitch, it's a reunion, okay? So again, what about you saying that you know some guy you knew told you Karen was was messing with his best friend? Well, you know someone you know Karen was allegedly you know out of town with. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, I, Jack, not Jack, but Mia was literally, she didn't say nothing she said made sense. His kid is his face. Like, bitch, what? <laughs> Kids look like, what, what, what do you mean? What? Because she would not fully explain what she meant. She she, <laughs> she let me say, you know, someone Karen was allegedly out of time with, like, you know, like, their family. I'm like, what? Giselle then said the person is supposedly family members of Mia's. Mia then said the owner of this restaurant's best friend's daughter. I'm like, so what? None of it made sense. None of it. So Karen said, okay, we'll give the info to Andy. Let Andy, you know, figure it out and not can sue whoever is saying this shit by me, because I, you can't be saying rumors like that by people, okay? We did say, people hate rumors when it's not, no, people hate rumors, but only when it's about them. No one hates rumors if it's not about them, okay? That's the moon, okay? Now, me, well, look, I was giving you a chance to deny it. If you said it wasn't true, it's not true. No, Mia said it to be messy, because Mia's, Mia's two things. Well, she's three things. Mia's Tall, she's messy, and she's a liar. I don't make rules, okay? So again, fussing back and forth, fussing back and forth. Well, Karen said I was I'm not fucking nobody else, or whatever. Leave me be, okay? You said I was banging somebody, or whatever. You said when he was too, meaning Mia is always around here accusing one of the ladies of sleeping with somebody, okay? And hey, go Robin. Well, you know, Karen, you know, why do you keep saying that? You know what I'm saying. You, you can't make it seem as if, you know, if we get information from people we know that it isn't true, okay? We don't we don't get our info from the blogs. Uh, Robin, you had a speakerphone and was saying that you got this from a blog. So you do get stuff from blogs, okay? But Robin's point in saying certain stuff we saying, we don't get from blogs. People tell us these things. People we know. So you can't make it seem as if everyone telling us stuff about you, they're all lying. When they call me, <laughs> Karen said, Robin, no one calls you. They call me about you, but no one calls you. The fact that we all know Robin is up and lying through her teeth because she know for a fact her and Juan was hiding the whole lying secret. I don't believe nothing Robin says, okay? And they didn't get on Robin. I didn't care. The majority of the thing was watching the the, the, the uh, replay of the season, the clips or whatever. The first one, Juan ain't there. Juan, I am so happy. Juan Dixon isn't there. Juan is never there. This is crazy. Juan can get the time to get up from his bed, leave the house, go to a hotel to pay a hotel bill for a whole trader from Canada. But he can't get up not one time in the past mm, five seasons to come to the reunion. He always working. He can't video chat here. Nothing. Juan didn't come. First of all, Juan will never come. And I mean that, okay? But Juan knew they would ask him about those allegations. That's why Juan didn't come. I, even if they, if that wasn't a thing, he still would not have came. But the fact that Juan was able to get up and go help a damsel in distress from Canada at a hotel. But he can never 
ever show up just to show people that he supports Robin in her role on this show. Again, Robin should, should be fired. Robin, why, and their two handsome little boys. Fired. 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 Tell Dwayne, tell her she's fired. Yes. Kino, <laughs> they're trying to fire the maid, okay? Robin, gotta go. Okay? Now, she brings up her own wine, sign a prenup. Come on, it's 50 50. We sign a prenup, it's 50 50. So people believe I, like he can't take ownership of, of my businesses. He can't do that. But you know what I'm saying? Because we felt like, you know, we made each other. We would not be where we are if we were not each, you know, if, if, if we were not with each other. Girl, shut up. She then said that there's not <laughs> a cheating clause. I said, you got married to a man, did not put in a cheating clause, even though. He had recently cheated. <sighs> Robin up on his couch acting like Juan was not a cheater before or during that first marriage. He was a cheater just recently. And while y'all was being roommates, it's beyond ridiculous. I mean, you sound stupid. Now, when they asked her about not inviting Wendy to Family Fun Day um, and having and asking Candace to bring Wendy's kids, I think it's Robin full of shit. Because each time, you know, this is Robin. I don't, I'm not a, I can't, I can't argue with somebody and not like somebody, or whatever. And then it's invite them and be around them. I can't do that. You, if you can fake it with wine, you can fake it with Wendy. You have been faking it with wine for years. Okay, if you can fakely be his girlfriend, you can't tolerate Wendy in a family fun day so all the kids can hang around. You did not have to talk to Wendy. Other folks could have, okay? So Robin, miss me with your bull stuff, okay? And Wendy said, first of all, Robin, on bullshit because why would she ask Candace to take my kids somewhere when Candace has never had any one-on-one -on -one time with my kids? Why would she? Well, if it was my kids, I would do that because you're you're irresponsible. If you're gonna send your children with people who don't know them, you're stupid. You should be arrested. Go to jail. Go to jail. Okay. Now, Andy does ask the question about these allegations against Juan at the school. Okay. Now, all Robin said was, look, what they're saying that Wine did did not happen. The allegations against Wine did not happen. The way he handled it was the way to handle it. It was what I would want someone to girl, what did he do then? Now I know she can't talk because it's the it's the case. But whatever, okay. And you know, they, they use wine as clickbait to get the story out. No, ma'am. Juan was involved. Juan was involved. He was the coach on the team. They didn't use him as clickbait. He was in it. Even if he did the right thing that you're saying, he didn't do anything wrong. He was still involved. Juan made himself clickbait. Okay? You don't want a horrible at handling, you know, Issues. I don't know how to do stuff. That's on y'all. I'm gonna leave that be. Okay. Anyway, no one cares about Robin. The men come out. Here comes the men. He comes the men. He comes the men. Okay. Anyway, so the men come out. Okay. Now, boom. We have it was made, you know, it was Eddie and, and Mia, you know, Gordon and and uh girl, Eddie and Mia. Eddie and Wendy. <laughs> uh Gordon and Mia. We also had Karen and Ray. Around here, but while talking with these two couples right here, okay, Andy asked Eddie, How did you kind of the drama of the show, you know, the happy Eddie stuff, whatever? How do you handle that stuff? He like, Look, it, if it don't affect my wife, you know, my family, my life, I don't take it serious. You know what I'm saying, um, it takes a lot to get under my skin, so I'm fine. You know what I'm saying, it, I don't get rattled easy, or whatever. So, I don't, I, I leave you. Eddie do seem like if Wendy don't care, he don't care. If she laughing, I'm laughing. 
because he like, I ain't doing nothing wrong, so I don't have a reason to get upset. And someone said I kind of flirted because I laughed or I smiled. I, I'm not doing that with y'all. My wife, trust me, my wife was not pissed, and my wife handled shit. Now, she get pissed off, I got I to gotta get you. Okay? So that was cute. I love Wendy and Eddie. They're so... I hope we get more of them next season. I hope I hope next season is a bit lighter, I, which means I hope they get rid of Giselle. I'm hoping they get rid of Giselle, Robin, or Abby. They can really get rid of get a, They can get rid of just girl. They they're not gonna get rid of Giselle. I can see that. But Robin and Abby can go. If they get rid of those two, bring in two new faces. Bring in some good vibes. Good vibes. Good vibes or something. Okay. Anyway. Um, Andy asked Gordon about how it was like for him going through his health care. And Gordon got on, you know, it was so hard. It was so hard for me, Andy, you know. It was tough. It was so many questions, but no answers. You know, so watching her struggle was hard. And look, it was sad because Gordon literally started crying. Okay. But I feel like because he went through his cancer stuff, so he probably felt like, damn, because he's, he's like, he's like, you know, think about my my kids and how it would be if they lost their mom. Like that would that hurt me? And I'm like, oh my god, Gordon, no, them crying or no, okay. So again, it was very sentimental, okay. But I still feel like, did Mia make you cry? Did she pinch you? Did Mia pinch you? Did she pinch him? Anyway, um, it was sweet to see you know say how much he cared for her, um, you know, to say how how hard it was for them. Now he also Andy asked Gordon, "Have you ever slept with Jacqueline?" He's like, "No, no." He like, I look at her like a little sister. I feel like that was Mia. That was Mia's doing, and she had them going along with it. Okay, so um, he said he's never been with any of Mia's friends, none of them. And, and he's like, "What about Peter's girlfriend, ex girlfriend?" Well, you know, I wasn't like, you know, you know, without penetration. I'm like, what? what? When he said there was no penetration, but they kind of, I'm like, fooled around. What y'all do? Like, then what happened? Because he said it as if, oh, no, it was nothing. I mean, was there any kind of sexual interaction is what I would have asked? Because that can mean someone got some head or whatever I'm saying, a little hand, I don't know. I don't know. But he said he's never penetrated any of Mia's friends. Y'all, Chris got a chance to speak. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Take one second though and like the video. Y'all know, even on a premiere video, I still need y'all to like the video. Okay, like the video. Y'all know to follow me on social media. Y'all know to comment in the comment section. And y'all know to subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's get into the Chris, Candace, Giselle, and Ashley. Now, we've seen Chris speak on social media. We've seen Chris say, you know, little stuff on the show. I don't think we've ever heard him fully express how he felt or whatever. So for the first time, it's Chris's turn to speak. Okay. Now, as he was trying to explain himself, Giselle kept trying to cut. He like, no, no, Giselle. You have time. You said all the things. You've done all the interviews, whatever. It's time for me to speak. Shut up. Okay. I'm adding shut up, okay? Okay, and I felt I agree. Candace, not Candace. Um, she, Giselle is trying to still run this narrative that she has any right to want to confront Chris. Because I felt like there was no need for her to cut him off. Let him speak his piece. 
Because again, you've been speaking all season. Okay. Now, Chris is like, look, I'll give you the notion that I asked to speak to you in your room. Well, let's just say, okay, I asked you to speak to you in your room. Okay. You said yes. You said yes, and you said you said yes, thinking your team was there. However, when we got there and you saw they were not there, why didn't you say to me, hey, no one is here, let's talk later, or talk in the hall? She also said, you also told Karen that I needed to say sorry for what I did to you. What did I do? What did I do to you? Okay, Chris started off calm. He got to be that. He, he, I think Chris got aggravated because I feel like Giselle kept trying to make it seem as if she didn't get what Chris was asking. She didn't get how no one wondered what she meant by what he did. Giselle was playing semantics. And he was like, no, tell me what I did to you. Because you were the one saying, I say sorry. For what I did. I didn't do shit. Now Chris gave a clear. Explanation about what happened. You know. Or whatever. Giselle is still trying to play. Let's make Chris upset. By me not answering the question. He, he, he said what did I do to you. She then. Will you ask me to get to meet in my room. You know you came up. We know of jail, whatever. And the point is, Chris, you know, you lied to Candace about asking me. And he was like, what? Look, I just said, let's say I didn't ask you. Cool. But you lied. She kept trying to make him mad by calling him a liar. Trying to say, because he said he didn't ask me to my room. And now he said he did. He lied. He's a, and she kept trying. I was like, girl... This is the one time where a physical violence would have happened. I think people would have understood. I do. The gotcha is, this is what happens when you are at odds with somebody. Y'all don't really rock right now for whatever reason. And you keep fucking with them. And if you get close enough, things going to happen. You're going to tussle. And in my opinion, Candace may have wanted to tussle with Giselle. Because Giselle, to me, was poking the bear. Now, because she's not answering what Chris did to her at the all. So, Chris, like, whatever. You know, you still have not told me what I did to you. Even if you're saying I lied about asking you to go to your room, I'm saying, okay, let's say I did. Once you saw your team wasn't there, why did you not say, hey, let's leave immediately? Okay, he also brought up how you were in their room, uh, in your robe, sitting on your bed. I wasn't in my robe. You were. He said you were. You were in your robe. He said you had your robe on top of your clothes. And we do know at some of these reunions, when they're on break, they put robes on to not get their clothes dirty. And they walk about the hotel. So when he said you had your robe on, on top of your clothes. You sat down on your bed. You were sitting here. I was in here. He was so detailed about what he remembered. And Giselle, she was rehashing. But you asked me. And she's missing the point. You want to know why? Because she's full of shit. You hear me? And Chris is pissed at this point. He's upset. He's pissed the fuck off. He's, he's adding curse words. Where he's like, look, whatever. You still had not told me what I did. I have suffered through this for 10 months. Losing clients and losing money. Okay? I had to answer my kids. I had to answer to my family. And I was like, I was, I was okay with Chris's vitriol for Candace, uh, for Giselle. Because he asked her, what did I do? And she's not answering. She's playing semantic. Let's play. Let's rehash other shit. Let's not know. What did I do to you? Okay. And then because he was saying a couple of course words, okay, in his seat, not getting up. Giselle, I am not okay with you cussing at me. We're not going to do that. No. Okay. What's not fine is you gutter snipe bitch. I said, gutter, girl, what? I Girl. Candace, I'm here for now. Candace said was not okay. 
Is you gutter snipe, bitch? I'm gonna play this right. Um, girl, did I even have one I did. There you go. Uh, no, I'm sorry. My hair was coming down. Talk about my hair. Candace was not okay. Okay, is you gutter snipe, bitch? <laughs> I could not get over the gutter snipe bitch ass line off. I said, gutter snipe bitch ass line. I said, girl, Candace is hood. Candace cursed like a hood girl. You know what I'm saying? And I just remember when Candace kept calling on Monique ghetto and hood or whatever. I'm like, girl, you got on, you, girl, you cuss like a hood. And I love it. That's not a diss to Candace. I was like, she, she was mad. Candace, Cand, Candace also set up. With Giselle's playing around, with Giselle trying to play with Chris, with Giselle trying to play with her marriage, and had the, the fact that Giselle can't say verbatim what Chris did is what pissed Candace off, and then Giselle trying to say I am not okay with you because because Giselle Giselle was trying to have folks be upset that Chris cussed at her. When we're upset that she won't say what the fuck Chris did. And so Ken is like, you know, we're not okay with, okay, you, you gutter snipe ass lie, you gutter snipe bitch, you gutter snipe bitch ass lying on my family. Um, It was gutter snipe bitch ass lying on my family, okay? And I was like, girl, <laughs> okay, um, Candace at this point is just, it's, it's a done deal. Okay, uh, it's a done deal. So Giselle then says, you were talking, okay? I felt like you had too much to drink, and I felt uncomfortable, okay? That's what you did. You put us in that situation because the next day, I talked to my stylist, and he told me that you knew he was gone. I was like, bitch, what? So was you offended that day or the following day? What? Okay, so... Chris says, but how do I know who are on your team? You know who your, if I seen one person leave, how do I know that mean I don't know who on your team? The, the, what? Okay, because she's trying to make it seem as if, well, Chris knows exactly who's all on my team. So if he knew one person was gone, he knew one. Girl, no, that's not, you sound, again, Giselle is again trying to, without even saying it, to make, Giselle is trying to make it seem as if, as she said during the season, he was trying to sneakily, sneakily, or be a sneaky link without saying it. Because saying you knew he was gone means you tried to get me along. So you, she's making it seem as if that was Chris's intent. And that's what pissed Candace off. Okay. And I think was it's weird. And so in you know, Andy, like well, Giselle, you know, it sounds like that's how you felt. And not something that he did to you. And just, I don't get it. I don't want to hear Bitch, you know you you not dumb. Not. Giselle is full of shit. And I feel like no one listened to Giselle from the start. I feel like everybody from the start felt like Giselle's full of shit. We don't believe you. We don't trust you. No one believed Chris did something to her. Even though we all said if she felt some kind of way, that's how she felt. But no one felt like Chris did something to make her feel uncomfortable. She can't say what Chris did at all. Okay. And when Chris said, okay, if you were uncomfortable and you're friends with my wife, right? He, I, yes, I am. Why did you wait five months to talk to her, your friend? about what I did on camera. I was like, why? Tell us why. So they then get on, you know, Chris or Ashley saying Chris DM'd her and they made her feel uncomfortable. And Chris is like, what? <laughs> Bitch, what? Okay. So while Ashley tried to say, well, I didn't know you worked at the W at the time, but the, 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 the DM still made me feel some kind of way. Girl, <laughs> Bye. Bye. But this is the thing. Um, when people reply to a story you put up, if they reply, you're at a party and someone says, hey, you should have came here. 
and he worked once you found out he worked there there was no reason for you to tell candace that you felt he, there's no need to tell anyone you felt some because you knew what he meant he, he come to my job bitch i'm replying to a story you put out there but i need that bitch. i'm gonna leave that bitch. so christian brings up how often Giselle speaks about his penis and we see flashbacks and all the times Giselle speaks about Chris's dick. And he said, I've never mentioned how you should say sorry to me, apologize to me, but that makes me uncomfortable. But I've never told you that, okay? So I don't expect an apology. You felt a way in the moment that day. You asked me to leave, and I did. But I didn't do anything to you. And when Giselle said, so who did we say did he? Bitch did what? Did what? Chris, I, I do not like the wording, okay, that you used, okay? You're mixing up words and you're doing it on purpose to make a point. You're purposely mixing up words to cause issue. And Candace said, bitch, you are a garbage individual with no soul. You're acting like a victim, but our reason women cannot speak up when something happens to them, Okay. And you sit there with the privileged, with your, you sit there with the privileged white looking ass. I'm sorry, you're, you, you're, and you think you can say what you want to say, and no one will care. Okay, your closeness to whiteness is it helps you sit there and lie. I was like, oh lord, now it was a big debate on social. Some fans were outraged. I can't believe she called that lady her. Because people, people were saying that she was calling Giselle white. She was saying that she's her white, or whatever. Giselle is very much so a lighter complected black woman. She can't, she don't look white. Giselle looks mixed. Okay. You know, I don't think on, on there on Green Earth, I, oh, that's a white. I don't, she, she's not white. Um, I felt like Candace's statement was fine. It could have been even finer had she left out the your white looking ass or your white looking skin or whatever, whatever white looking and she left that one part out left everything else in i think folk would not have had an issue um for me i feel like i'm going to i'm going to say i feel like i always say you know you should not need to read folk for certain things i do think because they have a color of conversation there's no need to mention someone's skin tone while cussing them out because they'll be saying that's colorism. I feel like how, even if she said how you look, your skin tone, you know, I think folk was upset because it was her saying, you're, you look white. And she don't look white. Giselle still looks like a black woman because they had lighter skins. So that was my only thing. I didn't mind her going off. I didn't mind. I just, I just felt had she left off your white looking ass, had she left that part off, I would. Because Giselle does have a privilege to her. Not because she's, she's close to, to, not that she's closer to, to being white, but because she's a lighter skinned black woman. And that's true tea. I know that. Um, I saw folks referencing back to a season one we're in where Katie was saying, was it Katie? No, can't no, no, it was it was uh Ashley who said to Giselle and to Robin, you two who have the most European features, and y'all kind of don't claim to be black. She pointed out how you know Robin dyes her hair blonde and you know has you know green eye or whatever. She was saying how you two women look the have the, the most you're close you have you have you have European features that you like to enhance you both by your hair and you look you have European looks but I still feel like this hell don't look white she's a very much so light complected black woman who uses that to her advantage do not get me wrong she does um so I don't think Candace was wrong because I posed the question on my on my IG I don't think Candace was wrong. I think, you know, what she said was what she said, but I also feel like she could have said all that and took out, you know, your white-looking ass. But like, she don't look white. 
whatever. So Wendy speaks up. In my opinion, to to help Candace realize people gonna have shit to say about you saying that. You know what I'm saying? I love you, you're my girl, whatever, you know. But after the colorism conversation, I'm saying we all agree to choose our words wisely. Okay, because speaking on Giselle's white skin can imply things. And folks was upset for Wendy for saying that. We have to, and Candace then said we have to leave space for the conversation. And a part of the conversation could be let's not use skin tone as the catalyst for the argument. Meaning, if you attack her skin tone, you're doing to her what you say she does to you. And there's ways to call Giselle out on her bullshit without making it about her skin tone. Because, you know, she isn't white. She ain't. So I would have loved if they could have had a further conversation and unpack that. You know what I'm saying? I think people sometimes are one-sided and they feel like it's either right or wrong. And like, and I don't think Ken did anything wrong, but I could... I can I can understand maybe not using that one little part. I said if someone ever said to Candace, your dark skin, look at it, it would be an uproar. You know I'm saying it would be an uproar. And I feel like we don't like we don't like Giselle. We don't like her. She's full of shit. No one believes her um at all. Now, when Candace like I, I receive that, I get it. Okay. Ashley then says, so the color conversation, like, you know, that doesn't mean nothing. You know, do you, you think it doesn't apply to you? Okay. Uh, to be more careful with the words. And I feel like Abby, shut up. <laughs> shut up. But I can, if Wendy, if Wendy would have said that, I would have been more okay with that. Because it's not about censoring Candace. It's about sometimes that we can use other words to get, to get the same point across so folks get your point. But Ken's like, look, I, look. at the end of the day, I said what I said, okay, and I'm just going to, that's what it is, okay? Um, but she explained, someone who looks like Giselle, no, I'm sorry, someone who looks like me, who, if I was to accuse someone of some kind of assault, um, it would not be taken as serious because of how I look on my skin tone. Someone like Giselle, who is lighter skins, it holds more weight. Okay? And I said, girl, Candace, look, usually it do, but no one believed Giselle. That's the one thing I feel like I, I, I love the fact that no one believed Giselle. Like, as much as Giselle wants to be this holier-than-thou, tr- no one fucks with her. And folk also don't like Candace either, but this season, based on what Giselle did, she gained more fans. Can I, I? I like her this season, and I usually don't. Okay, um, and when she said, you know, Candace said, um, my point was again, her skin tone and accusations are taken more serious versus if mine, it would not be. And we know that's true. Black women in general usually are not believed when they accuse someone of anything. You know hear I me? Mean? Um, and she said, you know, I'm sorry. She said, I'm not sorry for how I said it. Because I have a hate. And it's based on what Giselle said about my husband. Okay. Now, Chris was like, well, you know, Giselle's apologized. And so, you know, we accept it. And Kenny said, I don't. Because she like Giselle said it out of convenience. It was not because she really wanted to say so. it's out of fucking convenience. I was like, girl, but I agree. And so we shall see how that plays out. Look, I don't think Candace or Chris has to forgive Giselle. And the fact that we not to see how they are on girl trip. So it's a whole other layer to this shit that's going on. Okay. So they then got on Mexico. I didn't care. I didn't care. Uh, look, um, Mia and Wendy never kissed. Mia, Wendy, Athy, and Candace all show each other their coochies. Mm-hmm. They were giants. 
Um, Ray did say, as far as the rumors again, he don't care. He don't believe him. It's all bullshit. Uh, he asked if the photo was Karen. Because, nope, him and Karen have not seen the photo. Andy had. Andy, look, Andy did not want to say, yes, it's Karen. He said it's a woman from the back at a bar. It's not any salacious nothing. So, you know, it's not an issue. And Ken said, I can go to the bar. And I'm like, look, I think the fact that production never showed us means it might not be Karen. Because it shows everything else. Might not be Karen, okay? But again, Ray don't believe the bullshit or whatever. He loves his wife. Boom, pow, pow. Um, Robin then said, I feel like, you know, you implied, you know, that wine, you know, assaulted you when you, when you said that he hugged you real tight. Okay, Karen said that was not my okay, my implication. My implication. I did not say that. I said he hugged me and it made me feel that way. Now Ray then said, "Well, look, she told me that it happened, so I knew, and we talked about it, and we and we and we handled it." Okay, um, and Karen made it clear I never said he assaulted me, but he should keep his hands to himself. I was like, I mean, you have to. At this point, no one on this thing can do nothing, okay? And it ends with them sitting around here dancing because Andy played Ken a song insecure. They dance around, dance, dance, dance. And then it zooms in on Robin. Dun, dun, dun. Then it goes to Robin on Watch, watch What Happens Live. Now, this was recorded, you know, weeks ago. I don't know why they play this here because it wasn't as if she said anything more here that they could have played on the, the first part of it. I was like, what, girl, it was done. It was like six minutes. It wasn't even long, okay? Uh, but she brought up how uh, the only time why I met the lady was at the hotel that one time. They did not meet no time or nothing. And he said, well, did, did you see the, their conversation? Like, did he show you their the, the convo? She's like, no, he, he, he never showed me their, 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 you know, their communication. Um, I never asked him to see it. And I believed him. I said, bitch, what? When she when she said, I never, girl, your fiance told, girl, <laughs> Robin's stupid. Your fiance told you a lady from Canada told you she had a boyfriend in, in, in Maryland. Can't, girl, you didn't ask for proof? Robin's stupid. Because I felt like she had seen these conversations. You literally are going off of what Wine said and did not ask him for no kind of in the fact that he did not offer up the proof to me means wine is also full of shit. Because if I get caught up in some BS, I'm gonna I don't need I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you nothing. Baby, look, here are the conversations we had because if he never showed you nothing, how do you know it was only kind of girl? She's dumb. It was not an affair. They didn't have. I don't. They didn't have sex. It was just a talking. You don't know because you didn't see. You you didn't see him say, "Hey, I will meet you at the hotel where nothing." If you didn't see the correspondence between the two, you don't know nothing. And now he right and deleted it. Girl, Robin is stupid. She then say we talked it through, you know, in marriage, and, and I'm sorry, pre-marriage counseling. It happened in November of 2021. He got caught. He she came to Maryland, <laughs> and we don't know how long they've been talking. Okay, it happened in November 2021. We started filming in March of 22, and by the time we were filming, we had already worked through it. You worked through your fiance cheating during COVID. In three or four months, so much so that you thought it was not even worth mentioning on the show about your life. And she did say, and me and Wine felt strong going into filming season seven. We didn't, we seen Wine what twice, three times the, the wedding day, talk about the prenup day, and the day y'all was out there hacky sacking or whatever, girl. Wine did not even come to Family Fun Day. The f girl, stupid. She said, we never woke up. We only took a pause. We, we paused, thinking about the wedding, while we handled things. 
Andy said, you're on a reality show. You're, you're on a reality show about your life. And cheating was a hot topic. How did you stay silent about what was going on? I was waiting on Karen to bring it up. I, was, I thought Karen would bring it up. He said, yeah, but why is it for Karen? Why not handle it because it's your fucking life? Well, I didn't want to bring up something that we already went through. Girl, the fact that she wants us to believe her and Juan handled a cheating allegation in four months and so much so they never talk about it again. You did not want to bring it up because you thought y'all had already worked through it. Now, when he bring up how Candace was pissed again, because again, Chris was the person that accused her. I think, but how you know, I have the I have nothing to do with what's going on with her and Chris. Okay, that's separate. Okay, I don't get why she mad at me. Okay, um, and why would I offer information that you know I was not going through at the time? Girl, you were. And Andy said, so it's as if you're saying, if you're not currently going through it at a time of filming, you won't discuss it? I was like, girl, you are signing your, your fire papers. Because, again, you're showing that you you will have real stuff going on and you won't talk about it. Meaning, if they're not filming right now, if filming starts on April 1st, and if on March 15th, Something happened, she ain't gonna discuss it on the show. And then she brought up how you know what I'm saying, look, I just don't want to offer up information if I'm not going through it at the time. Also, I don't want to bring up stuff with the men, you know, because why and girl, because why is barely on the show. And for her to say, I don't bring up stuff that happens with the men, he was like, But the big topic of the season was Chris cheating, and so it seemed like Chris was, you know, hung up a drop as a sacrificial lamb, but you had actual stuff going on, okay? And you, it held up the wedding. People asked you all season about the wedding. You never mentioned shit, okay? And you, so that you don't men, men, girl, mention stuff about the men, but you brought up the rumor about Karen cheating. Well, that was about Ray. You know, that was, I'm not, I'm not sure that, that was not about Ray. That was about Karen. He said, yeah, but Ray is married to Karen. Like, that would hurt Ray, too. Well, Karen, which is not Ray, you know. If I brought up, I brought up it. We had a girl. At the end of the day, Robin is a liar. And Robin should not come back next season. I said before, I feel like this was Robin's farewell. So long, a beat of in the night. Bye bye. Because they closed her out. They asked you every question about you and why. Why is not going to talk about any of this shit next season? Because he don't. Why don't come round here? I feel like they said let's ask her everything we can at this this thing. And we don't need her back next season because why she held back a pivotal, juicy storyline and gave us nothing and was lying when we kept asking her about the wedding, about her and why. What's holding it up? Oh, nothing. We're just waiting. You know, we're just trying to figure out what to do. You were lying. Full of shit. Anyway. That's all I have. I hope y'all enjoyed. Okay. We are done with Potomac. Done with Potomac. Okay. So tomorrow I will be doing the escape show. I hope y'all will tune in then. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Like the video. Follow me on IG, Twitter, and TikTok at Jay's Corner. And that's it. Gotta go. Love you all. Bye. Yeah.